I'd like to just share a sort of tool that I've explained in another video when it relates to creating um, uh, mock-ups inside of Affinity Design and how you could create live mock-ups where you're changing the images in and it fits in with correct perspective and everything. But this is just for somebody who wants to put in an image here and keep the perspective going on this particular image. So usually what would happen is you'd come in and place an image. Let's go. Um, you see this thing defaults to text here. I don't know why. Uh, might be a bit of a glitch in the matrix. It should kind of just default to all documents. There might be a default setting in my preferences, but I think it's just a bit of a little bug. Um, I'm using 1.7 now, so uh, you can check out. Maybe it doesn't happen on your side. But here I'm going to place an image. So if you want to place an image, usually people would go something like this and uh, something like that and try and stretch it and all that sort of stuff under control Z, control Z. But that is not perspective. That is kind of um, sliding this thing. I don't know what, what's the name for the shearing. It's shearing these nodes when you work with them. Um, and I've seen somebody suggest a method of going into a photo, which is then begs the question, why don't they just add that feature into the pixel persona? Bottom line is, if they put in all the features that are in photo into the pixel persona, then it's going to clutter designer to such an extent. Um, one needs to almost have that same workflow like we have the bridge in uh, the Affinity Publisher application where you can click on the icon and it will pull up the whole photo uh, menus, everything. So it, you don't have to reload the program. It literally changes the working space for you. But I mean, I think that will maybe come down the line. Yeah, with a pixel persona, it's just giving you the ability to do most of your pixel work that you would need in this environment that you don't have to leave it. Because if you only purchase designer, then at least you have that flexibility. Um, for people who have uh, designer, photo and publisher, they, they would make the comment, you know, why can't we just make it happen quickly? But I think all the programs will have that option of moving in between them as happens now with publisher that's got the photo icon, the designer icon and the publisher in that window. And then of course if if you don't have all three it will just default instead of opening up the photo application it will give you this pixel persona kind of thing. So I think that's probably where it will go. But onto the the process now is don't think of opening a photo as a total independent uh, work process. I think it's streamlined enough to feel it's just part of the program. So if I'm in here, I'll go there and just say edit in photo. Okay. The um, thing I'd like to see is that the program creates a immediate opening of the photo document that I'm working in. It is in the document, but it doesn't by default kind of bring it to the front. So that might be a, a Windows limitation. Uh, I don't know. But it's a small thing. I'm just kind of mentioning. So I'm clicking photo, it brings it in here. Now often what I see people do specifically with uh, perspective because you can't do it with some of the other features but um, like I'll show you here the perspective tool. If I'm working with this perspective tool I've got to I've got to click on perspective tool and then it will do something here if I look here. Now for a photo it's not that bad because a fo photo is pixel based. But if I click on perspective you're going to see the assistant comes up with information that it had to rasterize this image. Okay, because it, it is a pixel based already so rasterizing it means it's just created a pixel base. If this was vector art it would have converted it and flattened it into pixel base and wouldn't have kept the vector editing ability which is the point I'm going to make just now when I use vector art in this space. So for a pixel based photo this is perfect because now I can go and just take it and position the different areas. I can go do my modification and this will keep perspective because this, this is a perspective tool. Okay so I can go and do the usual. When I'm done I can say apply and then take it back into designer there we go, open designer, and there we have our photo perspective sorted out. 
yeah, the proper perspective. However, if I wanted to alter this, if I see that the corner is not proper again, and I go back in, I have to go back into uh, edit in photo, and when I come here, um, I've got to re-engage the. Uh, let me see. I'm going to re-engage the perspective tool, and you notice that the perspective tool now is not on perspective. It's now a a different kind of position. So that's that was a kind of destructive editing of of the specific um, um, image that we were working on. And of course, if I was working with placing a vector image in here. I would have lost the ability to edit the vector image when I get back to Affinity, again, Affinity Designer. So let me just shift back to Designer and ah, sometimes I wait here and I don't realize I've got to click at the bottom. So I'm going to remove this and let me show you what a better way of doing it is or I think the best way currently. So if I place this image, I can just place it wherever because I'm not going to edit it physically and I'm going to go to edit in photo so if I edit in photo instead of going to this tool okay now there's two tools here currently I the perspective tool is the only one that can apply this principle I'm showing you now the mesh tool you you have to do it and rasterize the image here because the same feature that I'm going to show you with perspective tool doesn't yet exist with mesh tool. And what am I talking about? If you go down here to the bottom, you'll see there are live filters. And what a live filter means is it doesn't destroy the underlying image or object. It creates a filter, a non-destructive filter. So if I click here, we have some brilliant things here. So let me, for example, choose motion blur. So I can add motion blur onto that object. And when I'm done, you see that same notice didn't come up. It didn't say it had to rasterize because this is just a, a live filter, live modification filter. And if I click on this filter and I delete it, I'm still sitting with the image. It hasn't touched the image. So it's these live filters are totally brilliant. Now, interesting enough, if you look here in this section, so each of these are grouped together um, as far as the, the function that they do. If you look here, these are kind of, um, I can say, modifiers that would create uh, like displacement, pinch punch, lens distortion on these images. But here is the magic, the perspective live filter. Now, I, like I said, I would love to have the warp uh, tool also as one option here. Probably in few future releases, they'll add a warp tool here because then we will have the full functionality of not only managing perspective, but also managing warp, okay. But not only in photo. This is where the the genius comes here at the moment. So if I click perspective, we have the exact same tools coming up here, exact same tools, okay. So I'm I'm not go. I can go now and take that perspective and pin it here. But if we look at the layer, that perspective live filter is there. Now the question is, it's been loaded here. Will it show up in designer? And that is where you all will be happy with it. If you go to Edit in Designer, there we are. And look at this, very interesting. If I double click on that, can you see different to if you had now used the actual filter in Photo, and you come back here, there's no ways of manipulating it further um, as perspective. And when you go back to Photo, because it had rasterized the image or flattened the image, you you literally if you put another perspective tool on it it doesn't grab on the ends of the particular photo so yeah look at this so here we can go in uh, where is this uh, screen okay i'm going to just put it top there and there we're going to say bottom area have i grabbed that correctly let's see okay Okay, so there we go. And there I've got the perspective. Now, if we could do that with a warp tool and it brings a live warp filter here, that would be genius. So I want you to look at all of those live filters that you get in Photo, the live ones, and realize if there are certain ones there that don't exist in Designer, you just go to uh, Photo, 
load that filter and then open it up in design and it will come in as a live filter here and then you have all the flexibility. Um, if we look here now in the fix layer or adjustment layer, these are the adjustments here, these are the effects here. So here I've got Gaussian blur. If I wanted to add onto this object uh, some, let's say, motion blur, I don't seem to have these ones in this layer palette. But that shouldn't be a problem because I could go in again, go edit in photo. I come to a live filter. I can say let's choose a motion blur. Okay. And I'm not going to even edit in here like I showed you earlier. I just go right back to designer. And in designer, there I can double click on the motion blur, add it in there as a live filter non-destructive okay so this is the power that we have here now at the moment and i don't think many people realize it that you you can use all the live filters that are in photo inside designer by just doing that jump out there go load that filter and bring it back here and the power of this is now okay, if i disable that i'm going to just delete that because i'm not using that at the moment if i get back to the car um, I don't even have to now go back into uh, Photo to go and work with the uh, perspective tool. I just double click here and I have the perspective tool right here to work with. Okay, so that's the incredible power of it. So I would suggest this is the way to do it. And you might ask, but if I'm just going to put a perspective in here and then life carries on because I'm working with a photo, you know, do I need to still use the live filter? and Probably not. I love still having flexibility, even though I'm not going to be tweaking this again. I just kind of, you know, kind of just have that uh, wantingness to do that. But also, I think the principle of keeping it as a live filter, if you can. Now, in future, if they add a, a warp live filter, then you, you can bring it in here and create warps around, uh, you know, like a bottle or something like that. And if you haven't seen that, that video on my channel about creating mock-ups, I use this, this uh, live tool and I, and I express there that if we do have the warp tool in future, we'd be able to do pretty much most of the, um, the mock-ups because then you could also have the ability to warp the thing differently in, in a live mode than just to flatten that image. Because as soon as you flatten it, it makes it not possible really to create mockups where people can go and double click and open and modify further. But let me show you why I think bringing the live filter in here is important. I'm just going to, um, let's say I'm gonna create, uh, what's going on here? Oh, I, I was fiddling with something early on, okay. So say I'm creating these two objects. Okay, and let me go into maybe doing that as just to give you the perspective of where the square is. So if I want these two things to be in relation to each other, so I want them to be perspective on the screen like they are here. Um, now I know you can go and convert this to curves and take the end and point it there and all that sort of stuff. But for perspective, um, you might want to come back and remove these objects in relation to each other once you've done the perspective. And if you take it to photo and you click the normal perspective tool in the toolbar, it's going to flatten these images. Okay, let me, let me show you. I'm going to just, oops, uh, let me just go and grab these and I'm going to I've got shortcut control G just to group this together. Now, if I go into photo, let's go into edit in photo. And I open up here. And then if I go into the perspective tool, can you see immediately there? It says that it had to rasterize this layer. Now, if I go ahead and I do this, um, let me just move that up there. Okay, so I move that there. Can you see there, we, there we're getting nice perspective of what's happening. But can you see there, because we had to rasterize, if I go back now, let's go back into 
designer if I get into designer and I want to click onto this can you see this is a pixel layer now I can't edit these things at all they are fixed in there now and that's why I don't recommend using that tool if you still want to have flexibility so I'm going to go control Z just get it back to these are vector art okay what I would suggest is we do we do it the way that I was suggesting it we uh, let's just go and we are going to go into edit in photo okay so rather than going there now okay if you want to warp the thing of course there's no other way of doing it than to warp it and change this into pixel base but perspective we have a live filter or any of these other features we have live filters so just introduce the live filter here and then go back to work with it in designer so all i do is click perspective um, and then i close that do you know what it's doing um, i have made perspective on this entire document so let me just delete that perspective i need to just go and select the area that i want to have as perspective which is this area so i select the area i go to live tool and perspective okay as you saw it, it took the whole document and it assumed i was going to modify the whole document so yeah i can just close this and now it's got that with a perspective live filter now i can go back oh, oh before i go have you noticed it didn't inform me that it's now rasterized this layer okay because i've just got a live filter over it and i use the live filter not these uh, perspectives so let me go back to edit in designer whoops man i keep waiting for this window just to pop open so there we have it now and there you can notice we in that group if i double click on there can you see that brilliant now i can go out there to my perspective and there it's giving me brilliant perspective and there we go can you see that's brilliant but here's the magic if i double click onto this can i edit it well what i do is i disable the perspective so that i can kind of go in and go and modify it and when i switch back on the perspective it just takes that modification and and puts it out there in that perspective okay um, i could also just double click on it uh, however it will show me where the existing area is not on that perspective that pulls out the perspective so if i come onto this area and i make it longer there we go everything is kept in perspective okay so that's why i believe this perspective live tool is so powerful and that should be your your uh, method that should be used when they introduce the warp tool i'm probably seeing this five times in a row but when they produce the warp tool then i'll be doubly excited because then now we'd be able to get that across here in future i think it would be even wise just to add those tools into the panel here because it works in designer i mean yeah you can see it works in designer so just to add another tool that does perspective and warp we'll be a for away on that one so this is my full recommendation if you're working with perspective inside affinity designer this is how you get it put in a live filter how do you get it pop over to to photo activate the live filter don't even worry to edit it there just bring it back into designer and then you start to do your modifications here so hopefully that's going to help somebody with their design work and make it work much more fluidly for yourself so have a fantastic day and god bless